Hello and welcome to the 21st lecture um, for AC1002 and uh, I hate to disappoint but there's actually going to be one after this because it was going to be just too long to have them lumped together. So this lecture is going to be looking at, uh, at services. So services are the, the things that we need in addition to the structure and the construction to make our buildings comfortable and allow us to occupy them. So we're going to look at uh, heating, hot water, drainage and power systems, but um, in particular looking at what happens within uh, grid connected properties and uh, off grid properties. So the services that we're, we're going to look at really we can, we can think of as um, the kind of basic human needs. We need power and electricity um, to give us to give us light and refrigeration and uh, television and mobile phone charging and all the, the other things that we, we take for granted. We need a uh, water supply and most of us um, take it for granted that we can turn on the tap and, and get uh, fresh clean water. When we flush the toilet uh, it has to be taken away somewhere so we've got drainage and we usually have some form of heating or fuel for, for cooking that we uh, that we also rely on. And the availability of those services depends on whether we are connected to a grid or not connected to a grid. And sometimes this is called mains. And if we think about on grid, this usually means that things like uh, power, water, fuel and drainage are supplied through a central system. So if you live in Aberdeen or uh, any number of the large towns, uh, large cities in, in Scotland, we would tend to have mains services. So we would have mains drainage, uh, water supply, um, gas coming into the houses. For an off-grid property, that usually means that we we have to supply some of those things ourselves. So some smaller towns, uh, the town I stay in, doesn't have a gas mains so um, we have to we have to work out our own fuel but we've got mains drainage and mains el electricity so it, it can be a mixture of things but sometimes uh, a house can be entirely off-grid so it has to provide all those services um, within its own uh, within its own grounds so we look at heating first um, and for a grid connected uh, building the, the cheapest and most prevalent form of heating is mains gas. So this is supplied through pipes within the, the street. Um, because it's a, a network and there's, there's a network to maintain, it tends to only be available in, in, in main towns. So, so cities, larger towns um, have mains gas. If you're not within reach of mains gas, the most likely form of heating is going to be heating oil. Um, I've got heating oil for, for my house and um, it is more expensive. Um, we need to get a van, a big uh, truck thing to park outside the house to, to pump the fuel into our tank. So we have a large tank in the, the side of our property. And because it's a, a, a product that you buy every you know four months or something like that, um, the price can go up and down depending on the, the market uh, fluctuations. So you're never really sure about how much you're going to spend on, on heating. And it's also not unknown for rural properties to have their heating oil stolen. So somebody pulls up with a, a, a vehicle with a tank on the back and a pump to an empty property and pumps away all the, the fuel. Because it's quite an expensive uh, commodity to have sitting about in your, in your property. Alternatives to uh, those two main types of heating. Um, there's a lot of conversation goes on about uh, wood chip or wood pellets, and you could say it's more sustainable than burning oil or gas. Um, it's a renewable resource, but there is a limited availability of pellets to try and get pellets delivered to your your, your house. There's only a few suppliers, so you're probably going to be um, at the mercy of their pricing structure. It's expensive to install the, the boiler systems and because uh, it requires a hopper to be able to hold all this um, material and to feed the boiler at regular intervals so it becomes a self-feeding system. But it can be a, a, a system that replaces a, a traditional boiler. 
we could use logs um, and a lot of properties of log burners um, but stoves are quite expensive uh, especially if you want a nice one you know upwards of four and a half thousand pounds some of them are fifteen thousand pounds to buy the, 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 the burner themselves and if you're going to be building a new house and you have uh, your off grid then logs could be part of a whole house heating strategy we could use a mechanical ventilation heat recovery system to to um, heat the house the supply of logs is quite expensive unless you own a, a bit of a forest and it's unlikely that you can get an automatic system that will put logs on the, the fire before you get up so the, the heating relies on someone feeding the stove but it is carbon neutral you're burning a, a material which has captured carbon from 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 the air if we look at mains drainage um, within cities what usually happens when when you flush the toilet as it goes away into one of these uh, terracotta colored pipes and maybe goes to a couple of manholes on your your property before going out into the street and uh, meeting the the main system and it's then taken from there down to a sewage treatment plant so it's dealt with centrally and usually it's paid for within Scotland uh, as part of your um, uh, part of your council tax so you would pay through that through through a, a taxation system um, and that makes it very efficient we're dealing with a lot of waste for a lot of people um, so you can have a, a large premises to, to, to handle that waste if you are not connected to mains drainage you tend to find that what you need is a, um, a septic tank or a treatment plant as it's more um, more likely these days and this is effectively is a big kind of plastic uh, tank bulb type thing that sits into the ground and uh, the the waste comes in one side and sits within that tank and separates and bacteria uh, eats away at the waste and then the, 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 the kind of clean water rises to the surface and falls out of that uh, the pipe that we can see there that's marked outlet and that usually goes to a soak away system these can be quite expensive to install um, you also need to maintain them you need somebody to come and pump out the the kind of slurry from them uh, at regular intervals so there's an ongoing maintenance cost for mains water, um, underneath the city streets, you will see, uh, or if you dug them up, you would see large blue pipes, and uh, these carry the, the water from a central treatment plant um, to your house. So when you turn on the tap, you get uh, fresh water at a constant pressure. Um, if you're at a private uh, supply, this can be as basic as a well um, but more often than not it's a borehole so it's a, a narrow gauge well that's dug down into into an aquifer and there's a submersible pump dropped down to the bottom which then pumps water back up the cost of putting all that in place is borne by the the owner of the property but it becomes a private water supply it's untreated so you would probably have to put additional treatment onto it in the form of UV lamps to be able to um, kill off any bacteria and it's also prone to um, or a lot of systems may be prone to drying up in the summertime so you've got a very limited supply if it's a very hot summer and there's not a lot of rainfall then your private water supply might uh, might start to dry up for power on the mains we uh, flip the light switch and the power comes on and we can we use power for, for lots of things within our within our houses um, and that's a copper wire network that uh, spans across the, the country the uh, national national grid and there's lots of suppliers for that so you can choose your supplier you can choose a cheaper one or a fixed cap so cost wise it's um, it, it, it's pretty uh, steady and you can you can um, get uh, a kind of good good deal um, you can also use renewable technologies along with mains power to be able to generate your own power within your, um, your your building grounds so that could be wind power or photovoltaics 
and um, and then there's a kind of exchange where uh, the, the phrase is always selling the power back to the national grid. That's not exactly how it works, but um, so you can use your own power or you can use the, the offset the power that you're using from the national grid. If you're off grid, then um, it's likely that you'll be using some form of uh, micro generation. So this could be photovoltaics if you've got access to sunlight, micro hydro if you've got running water or a pond with a, um, a suitable head that you can then drop water down through a, a turbine system, or it could be uh, wind turbines, small turbines. If you're off grid, then it tends to be that you have to store the power locally, so you'd have a battery bank. So in conclusion, those services are those aspects of building which don't hold up the building or keep it keep it uh, watertight or weathertight, but we need them for um, comfort. We need to be able to to occupy the building, and these things make it um, more comfortable to do so. Depending on the location, whether you're off grid or on grid, different technologies are available. So the things that we should take from this lecture are that off grid and on grid services require different technologies that main services are usually more cost effective than off grid services and that can be to do with installation charges ongoing maintenance and a share of cost that main systems are often more reliable than off grid services and we've got somebody else to to maintain them they're, they're a larger uh, more robust system and that renewable technologies are available to most buildings. Okay, thank you very much for listening and uh, we'll top this one up in the, the next lecture.